in here on GCR as we continue along. Um, th- my friend Amanda Crocky had asked me about, you know, having the commissioner back in before opening day, and, and I always wanted to do that. I, I always enjoy, you know, talking about that, what it means for our city and, you know, tips for, hey, avoid trouble, don't make things worse for yourself. I like doing that. Obviously, this week, you know, the events that have gone on in our city, you know, there's some other things that I, w- I want to talk about a little bit, but I always... Um, I'm happy to have these conversations. I think it's the first time since um, uh, Commissioner Richard Worley has taken over that we've had him here in studio on GCR. Rich, it's it's so nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. I know it's been a very busy week. Thank you for coming in and spending some time with us. Ab- absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, I guess let's start, just spend a minute on that. And it's it, it, I think it's an interesting – we deal with a lot of things in our city, right? Obviously, you never – there's no game plan. I can't – You've got probably got a playbook for a lot of things that you deal with. There's no playbook for what happens when you get the phone call, the key bridge has collapsed. What have the last 36 hours been like for you? And I, I, I've, I, we've talked a lot about the varying emotions that we've dealt with, right? Like the emotions of sadness versus how much worse things could have been. And that, in a way, it's miraculous that it wasn't worse. But you, you don't want to take anything away from the fact that six souls perished in this. Like, there's just a lot of emotions for a lot of people. Um, absolutely. And, and there, you, you never plan for something like this, but there is sort of a game plan, the incident command system that we've put into place after pretty much after, um, after 2001, the tragedy of 2001 and 9-11. That system helps a great deal because we treat these major incidents just like every, not like every major incident that usually involves a tragedy. And the tragedy here could have been much worse. The six, the six individuals who, who we believe uh, have perished from this accident is, is a tragedy, and the families will always be in our prayers and our thoughts. Um, but there could have been much worse if we, if. Uh, the communication mm-hmm. had not taken place and the proper channels were set up to block the traffic going onto the bridge. And then just the men and women, the first responders who put their lives on the line simply to block the traffic and then to go into the water um, and get the two individuals who were able to get out and who are still there now trying to recover everything that's, that's down under there um, with any possibility that there could be someone somewhere that it could have survived. There's always... Uh, you can always hope for a miracle. Um, the the hope kind of wanes as you yes, get further and further. But our divers are out there right now with the fire department and all the other agencies. Um, and that's the thing that, uh, that I think er- every first responder should be proud of is that every single agency, I don't even want to name them because I'm going to miss so many, um, and even as far as Canada have offered support. That's but great. The, the men and women uh, right now, the, the uh, divers are down there uh, trying to recover whatever we can um, under the water. And it's kind of dangerous because you never know what, what they're going to encounter because the visibility under there is so is not very good. Oh, heroes. To I mean, that's the easiest thing that we can say is, yes. t- is truly heroic, that response. Um, as we move forward now, and we know that there is going to be major disruption to a lot of things, what would you want – the citizens, obviously, you know, you're the Baltimore police commissioner, but this, of course, speaks to a greater. What would you want them to know, and what would you ask of citizens of this community as we try to move forward? There, it's there's going to be, there are going to be headaches. Like th- there's just kind of nothing that we can do about that in until we get to that place down the road where there is a new bridge or you know a, a new pattern for traffic things along those lines yes and, and it kind of goes back to what we were going to start and what we are going to start still on friday is the the uh, our traffic and people have to have patience yeah um they they've seen everyone seems to have lost patience since COVID. is that the driving habits are, are horrible and not just here everywhere it's the city the county other states uh, it, people just um, and I'll, I'll go back to what I said earlier is they look at stop signs and red lights and, and speed limits as suggestions, and they, it, it's causing so many issues. But they have to have patience, um, especially a- as the, 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 the key bridge is no longer going to be a possibility from getting from one place to another. So you've got to use alternative um, travel routes, and the problem is that those routes are going to now become more crowded because of more people. Um, the 
the only good thing that, that I can think with the traffic is the fact that we still have a lot of people who work from home. So that's cut down on some of the traffic, but there are going to be major delays as as you move from place to place. We saw yesterday that uh, people who live in Anne Arundel County, Pasadena, um, I talked to a young man that said he, he uses the Key Bridge every single day, yeah. so he's got to find another alternative route. But I would just say practice patience and have a little courtesy for the the other driver instead of not letting them in to the lane of traffic, let them in. We have, uh, oh, Rich, man, we could have, we could do an hour on this particular topic. Like, and we have, we are lo- the the right. I don't know. I've I've convinced the social media related. Like everybody believes they're the star of the show now. But like the I, when I was younger, people ran red lights. We're getting to the point where like we're going through red lights ten seconds after that. Like I, I've never. I, 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 this is anecdotal. I have no statistics to back this up. I don't know what you guys are dealing with, but I have never seen anything like the recklessness with which what we're doing matters, what you're doing does not. All that matters is we've got to be somewhere. Whatever you're doing, it's worth us risking your lives but because it's so important, whatever it is that we're doing. It's astonishing what I have seen in recent years as far as traffic is concerned. It's yeah. You're right, and that's why we are we are one of the reasons we're doing this initiative. Um, the mayor and I have talked about it a great deal with the mayor, the deputy mayor, about the the fact that people will just pull up and put their flashers on and get out and oh, and go. <laughs> they'll just get out and go somewhere and say, "Okay, well now go around me." And uh, oh. the the good thing for me is that I'm in an unmarked car. <laughs> so when they do that to me, and, and they, yeah. they'll wave us around. Yeah, and, uh, you're like, yeah, now we're actually going to have and, a talk. And I hit yeah. the, I, well, I hit the lights. I was like, no, you're going to move. Yep. Um, and there's a couple areas in the city that drive me nuts. Um, unfortunately for my men and women, as I can see those out the window, and they'll get a text message to get tell those cars, move those cars from stopping you think they can run in and pick up food and disrupt everybody else's traffic on Pratt Street to move. Um, and the men and women have done a fabulous job with it. Friday is when we're going to kick it off. Uh, we're going to start enforcing. And because I've talked about it so much, and the mayor's talked about it, I've already – I look at our vehicle stops every day. I've already seen our officers start to adjust. Wow, okay. They've already started making more traffic stops. And there's a twofold um, process, and there's something that we're going to – we're going to stumble upon some things that we probably – would not if we didn't stop more vehicles because we know that more cars are being stolen. Mm. Carjackings are down, but vehicles being stolen and using those vehicles to commit ro- street robberies is increasing. And the just the fact that a lot of guns are transported in vehicles. So as our men and women start to stop vehicles, start stopping vehicles for more traffic violations, they can do a further investigation. Um, and there's there's a lot of people in the city who drive who don't have a license to drive or whose license is suspended, um, not just in the city but in the state. So as we start to increase more and more interaction during the traffic stops, we're going to stumble upon some other things. And our men, men and women do a fabulous job of investigating, and they, they use the constitutional policing to get these individuals off the street um, who are going to carry guns in our city, and there's a proliferation of guns in the city. I think we know that. Yeah. Yeah, we know that to be true. Uh, Commissioner Richard Worley, the Baltimore Police Commissioner, is in studio with us. Let's let's get to the fun part of this conversation, right? Then we can talk more about, you know, bigger safety issues. The fun part is we think opening day is tomorrow, weather permitting, and it's a it's it's a holiday. It's it's one of our favorite days all year long. You're a Baltimorean. Um, you know how much this day means to everyone. How many people are going to end up being, to the closest thousand, how many people are going to end up being cited for public urination downtown tomorrow? Um, my goal is zero. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. But there, there will probably be a few. Um, one thing that we, we will have is, is I hope they don't because there are plenty, there are plenty of restrooms and, and businesses that you can, you can frequent to purchase something or just use the restroom. Some will. And, and I can't go by. The, I can't judge the rules on what the mm-hmm. businesses do, but um, it, it's something that's just it's just disgraceful that you you would do something like that. There's enough places to use the, the the facilities that you don't have to do that. But when our officers come upon it, they will they will cite it. Um, we're going to have plenty of officers out 
opening day, like you said, is a great day. I remember we used to get a half a day of school to go to uh, yep. to go to the Orioles game, and we don't have a lot of officers in. Well, we have officers inside the stadium, and we work with the Maryland Stadium Authority to provide the security inside. We'll have traffic with all of our city, state, and federal partners helping us. And then we also, something last year that we, unfortunately, we didn't have to deal with this in the past because there weren't as many fans coming to the games because the, they, they just weren't getting fans. Well, now the team is, yeah, very, good. Su- yes. team is right. very successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a great problem to have. We have thousands of people parking their garages, walking to and from the stadium. So we have to make sure our officers are out there on the ingress and egress, keeping those individuals safe as they move to and from the stadium, and all the festivities that they they uh, I- embark on before and after. The downtown area has several establishments that are going yep. to cater to it um, every single day. And I hope we win a World Series this year, and we have to deal. Boy, with that the would be that would be a great problem to have, wouldn't it? That yes. would be a wonderful problem. Advice that you would offer to someone, because like this is the reality. Um, a, a lot of people are going to wake up tomorrow morning at seven a.m. and report downtown and start drinking very early. It's just that's the way it goes. That's no longer my life. Um, once upon a time in my life, that that would have been in the plans for me. Advice that you would offer to people who are planning on and invi- in, in, in having a day. What should they be thinking about? What should they be making plans for today, before tomorrow? Just what advice would you have in general for someone who's planning on making a day of festivities tomorrow? Uh, number one, I would say plan ahead because some of the routes obviously have are not going to be uh, available. It's going to be crowded. There's going to be a lot of people going in and out of the stadium area. Um, and there's still business day. So there's going to be people in, in the downtown area because of businesses. So I would tell you, plan ahead. If you're going to drink, use one of the ride share services. Don't drive because if we catch you drinking and driving, we are going to arrest you. Um, I, I would add to that, it's, it's not just that you could get arrested. You could kill somebody. Yes. Don't do it. Absolutely. Don't do it. There are, there are enough ride share um, companies out there that you can get a you can get a whatever I don't want to say any names but right take we, the we all know uh, what they are yeah, yeah correct yeah, go go and and take it we, we I we use it just for um, convenience not even the fact that you have to drink but and uh, use uh, public transportation it's all there available to you enjoy worry don't worry about your safety we will we will worry about that we will have enough officers around to keep everyone safe, hopefully. Don't put yourself in a bad circumstance. If you are driving, be patient and courtesy and let there's going to be parking everywhere. But enjoy the hopefully an Orioles win, the first of a hundred or more. Yeah, right. <laughs> may it may it be a hundred and twenty. May it be a, a record setting season. I I'm I'm, I'm gonna handle this deliquit deliquit delicately. Yeah. I talk for a living. Are the people that go downtown and wear diapers geniuses or disgusting rich um i i would not do it yeah i don't think i've never had the thought every year i think to myself maybe this will be the year i just i just see like we make it like a social experiment i'm like no no it's gross there's no way i'm gonna do it but then there's also the part of me that like says yeah but (laughs) like i don't i think it's gross i think it's disgusting if you're drinking that much stay home stay home Stay home. There's plenty of bathrooms. You don't need to stay home. Yes. You know, it's just not. There's bathrooms everywhere. That's the way it goes. You brought up a word a little while ago, the word, of course, being safety. And you know in this job that's the word that I'm sure you deal with the absolute most is people saying, I don't like coming downtown because I don't feel safe. Can you walk me through why an Orioles fan, why a concert going, and boy, you know, the, the arena has provided so many opportunities you know what a what a boon that has been for our city. Why you should no longer or should never have not felt safe to come downtown for an event. Um, there are probably times where you 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 were right in not feeling safe because things were not done right. Um, and let's just say when we did c- catch people, sometimes they weren't prosecuted. And we have changed all of our philosophy now not really the philosophy but our deployment downtown we we cannot uh we cannot lose the downtown area it's a great area 
CFG Arena is providing a great venue. Um, the, we have conferences in the, in the city every day. And we have our officers. We, the redistricting has helped us a great deal with the central district. And we know that we have to have deployment down there because as more and more people frequent downtown and more and more people come back to work, the governor is having more state workers come back to work. He's d helping with the economy of the city. And we have to keep everyone safe. I can't make you feel safe. That's a personal thing. But I think if we provide enough officer presence and you see officers and you see visibility, and we can't do it alone. We have our federal, state, and local partners. We have school police, the sheriffs, Maryland State Police, um, um, University of Baltimore, University of M UMB Police. Uh, we have all of those different agencies now working together. We have the fire department, who's a great help with us, and we have a great partnership. And all the other city services, which a lot of people think about with safety, think about the other city services don't play a part, but they do. Um, you see the, the just the comfortability of coming downtown and seeing that trash is being picked up, hmm. um, mm -hmm. seeing that we have proper uh, maintenance, that the city is cleaner. Um, I just think the fact that people feel more comfortable when one of the big things that we haven't talked about yet is the city uh, has done a fabulous job with the uh, squeegee workers. L I, I'm glad you bring that up because I, I have, you know. I was hesitant on bringing it up. I no, <laughs> and, and, and this is, it's such a difficult, look, let's be, let's put all the cards on the table, straight shoot, right? Like I, I, I personally, Glenn Clark, have never had a negative interaction with a squeegee worker, right? And like. I, there have been times where I've had a, a dollar and I said, hey, man, you know, like, here you go. And there are a lot of times where I haven't. And I said, hey, I'm sorry, you know, it, all good. I've, it's never happened. With, I've never felt uncomfortable in those circumstances. But I understand that there are people that do. Uh, I know there have been initiatives that have been put into place. But a lot of people in the last couple of weeks, hey, the weather's getting nicer, starting to notice that there are more squeegee workers that are out. What is... It, the advice that you give people for their interactions with squeegee workers, like, and, and just take me through, ideally, what this looks like for you as police commissioner moving forward. You know, are there squeegee workers? Do we? It, how how does this work moving forward? Yeah. Well, first, the mayor's office has done did a fabulous job with dealing with the young men and women who do the squeegee work. Now they've given them all. Mayor, um, Mayor's officer, African American male engagement with Dr. Bunley. Monsi has done a they, they've done a fabulous job of giving these giving these young men and women alternatives. The problem that you we run into now is there's grown men and women doing it. It's mm. not kids a lot. Um, but the biggest thing I would tell you is that we are still deploying to it. Um, we have a very very minor part. In it and the fact that we can give them warnings and then there's a certain point that it becomes a citation. But usually as soon as we show up, they leave. But before we show up, we'll call the mayor's office and have Dr. Bunley's people come out and deal with the young men and women to try to give them alternatives. And a lot of them have taken advantage of it. And we still have areas. And the bad thing is now that I drive around downtown more to and from home and to and from different events, there's a couple areas I just send a text message like there's squeegee workers here. On my way home, there's squeegee workers here, and they're, they're not allowed to be there. We clear them off because we want your experience in the city to be safe. Um, sometimes I've had one bad experience with a young man, but I used to run into him all the time, and uh, I just say no. I was like, just mm -hmm. shake my head. They usually know that I have an unmarked police car. Okay. So they they, they kind of <laughs> yeah. stay away, but – the main thing I would tell you to do is do not give them your phone. Do not, I mean, do not give them your phone and tell them to transfer money through Cash App. Don't give them any of your device. If you want to give them a dollar, that's fine or whatever you want to do. But I would just keep the windows up and just shake your head no. If you have an issue, try to get a, a, a good description of the young man or, man or woman and call 911 and give them the best description that you can or just pull somewhere and ask to see, speak to an officer, and then we can go address it. But the worst thing you can do is give them your phone or try to cash app them any money because they, they can. We've had it last week where they took a phone and transferred $2,000. Yeah, that's not great. You're not getting that back. That's 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 the way it goes. You're not getting that back. We were talking about fraud last week on the show. You are not 
it's it's gone now. That's just the way it is, unfortunately. Well, yeah, that's good advice. Don't do that. <laughs> that is very good advice. But nine. 90% of the young men and women out there that are doing it are doing it to earn a few dollars. Um, it's, that, it's just like with everything, the 10% who commit the robberies, get mad and damage a vehicle, that's who ruins it for everyone. But it's, it's happened enough that the fear of it being there is there, and we've done a, the city has done a really good job of giving them alternatives and clearing most of it out of the city, and we're going to continue to work with that until every single uh, young man and woman has an opportunity to take have use another alternative to to being out there squeegeeing because not only is it is it something that we don't want to don't want to see it's dangerous and it's against the law when you're running in and out of traffic especially at nighttime because yeah. you can't see them yeah no question all right so uh commissioner you told me you uh, you were a baseball player when you were uh I was. You know, you don't have like in the. You couldn't come out of the bullpen on 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 Saturday if we needed you no, for like an no, inning no. at the I, end. I we wasn't. A, I wasn't a pitcher. I was a. I was an infielder and a catcher. Okay. You um. You know, we we maybe need a second baseman right now <laughs> because Jackson Holiday's not up. You think you can give us a? You know, if called upon, right? We get one of those like sixteen inning games and something like that. You sure, sure. I'd I'd love to take. I I still think I could hit one of the one of the player one of the big league players. I'd I'd love to. I still play so. It's uh we run into some guys who throw fast when we, that we play, but they're throwing their 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 uh definition of throwing hard at my age is eighty to eighty. Right, miles, yeah, 80 correct. Miles it's not ninety seven, right? So it's not ninety seven. Yeah. but you actually can see the ball yes. for a second and have some sort of idea of where it's going. Yes, but, but you know we we at at age of at my age in the fifties, you still think you can do stuff when that you did when you were twenties, and then. You quickly learn oh, that oh, you cannot. Rich. Or if you do, the next day you're not walking or moving around. Rich, I'm just 40, <laughs> and my two sons, I got a 9-year-old and a 6-year-old, they decided they wanted to switch from lacrosse to baseball this year. And I went out for, like, the first time just throwing batting practice and hit them grounders, and the next day I couldn't get up. Like, I just, like, what? These are... These are parts of my body I haven't used in some time. Yeah. It was miserable. We're, we're getting ready to start our season. We went down to Florida, and I haven't I haven't swung a whole lot since we got back from Florida, so I've got to get to the cages this week or next week before we start playing. I mean, I, uh, I, I don't think that – I don't think that I could still play as frequently. I th think that would be – I mean, I went, I went to like a rock climbing gym the other day, and I'm still in hell. Like, <laughs> I think that those days are just over <laughs> for me in my life. It, it's fun. I, 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 I stayed away from it for 10 years, and then one of my buddies got me to come back out and play baseball. We play on Sundays and uh, maybe one day a week. Yeah. But it's still a lot of fun. You, you still uh, – it's just getting out and the camaraderie of being out there and playing – and uh, getting a break from That's everything cool. else you do yep. is a lot of fun. Oh, they're stressing your job? I can't imagine. Um, Still get angry yeah. when I go <laughs> over for three, though. Commissioner, before we let you go, uh, I assume that there's still a, a need for uh, more officers. I assume that there's still, you know, you guys could use more help. Absolutely. We're, we're going to probably be within the month of ma March or April, we're going to fall below 2,000 police officers. And at peak, we had over 3,200. When, wow. we, when we went under 300, uh, murders the last time in 2014, we had 20, 2,981. So we had 981 more officers. But this tells about the great job that the men and women are doing out there in the city for the city police, as well as our partners, because we couldn't do it with that, without our state, local, and federal partners and other city agencies helping take the burden of some of the calls. But we do need officers. There's a $10,000 sign-on bonus. Um, the starting salary right now is 61000 but they're in negotiations. So I think um, and we're, we're going to go move towards a take-home vehicle. We have incentives to live in the city. We have a lot of different incentives, um, and it's a great organization to come and learn. It was one of the best decisions I made was become a police officer. And I knew when I came here we weren't going to be the highest paid. But I came for the love of the job, and I, I, I love it. I still, I still love it today. And, and I know we talk a lot about you be the dip, be the you know you want to see a difference, be the difference, right? Like Absolutely. step up and, and be a part of this. Where can people find out more if they might be interested? They just call the recruitment section. Um, just or you can basically go online. The easiest thing is go online because we have nationwide testing, so you can go online, sign up. You can sign up for the test. The recruiter at BaltimorePolice.org. Yes. Okay. Baltimore Police. Police. The police will call you back, um, and 
one of the recruiters will call you back, and then you'll be on your way, and you can you can join us out here, and you're you're going to learn. One thing with the BPD is you come here and you you handle things here within three to five years that most officers don't handle their entire career. And if you decide you do want to move on to another position, you can you can springboard it into a law a lawyer a job as a lawyer. You can springboard into one of the federal a- agencies. It's just a great place to learn. But once you get here, a lot of people leave and then they realize well. Every agency is about the same throughout the country. <laughs> right. uh, everywhere you go, it's the same issue. So um, this is a pretty good place. We're building a couple new police districts. The mayor has invested a ton of money, and the governor has given us a lot of money to help build our department. And right now we're, we are the agency that, um, with Commissioner Harrison, when he, he put us on the right path, I'm trying to keep that path going. And we're looked at as one of the agencies around the country that are doing things Right, we have a, a world-renowned health and wellness program, um, and just the fact that the the job that our men and women are doing, being so short, is an, a testament to the hard work that everyone has put in. And and can I just before I let you go, can I confirm that like the statute of limitations probably would be up for like any substance someone might have consumed at the 1999 HF Festival while the Red Hot Chili Peppers were playing? <laughs> can I just hope that there that are there are still rules though, but there there are um, we we've learned. Like even like with our uniform policy, we used to have a very strict policy on tattoos and facial oh, hair. Oh, I I just meant not for com- no, coming no, a I, cop. Yeah, I just meant like you know maybe oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah, general no, no anybody that might have maybe done yeah, something yeah, those probably are, that's twenty five years. We're we're good yeah, at this you have, point. You have to adjust. Yeah, you're all good. Right, all right, all right. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we know. have to adjust with the times, like tattoos and, and oh sure beard, yeah. and beards are in so. Um, we're we're going to do so. So what appearance. you're saying is the long-haired freaks are now we're we're, we're good now. You want to yeah. become a? You still have to cut your hair. Like oh, all right. You still enough. you still have to have the the hair has to be cut and look professional. Um, and we're we're getting back to a, a uniform. Uh, we're going to provide them with a better uniform and a more comfortable uniform. So we're trying because we listen to what our officers say because it's easy for I've done it for 26 years and I'm not out there every day. So if I want to change and and, and attract officers i have to ask the officers what they like yep and when i hand go to roll calls um i ask them it's kind of hard because they all don't you, you're the commissioner so <laughs> right they, they, they don't always they don't really want to give you they honest always right don't give me honest like, answers. no we love everything yeah. oh, everything no, no, they, they don't tell oh, me that oh, oh. No, they're, they com- they're not afraid to complain but a lot of the complaints that they they give me are valid complaints and things that were that we're working on. And okay. That, th- those are the things like the permanent shifts and not having to take home yep. vehicle. And yep. Those things we can change. We can change the little things um, to attract the officers, but we have to make them happy to increase morale, and then they will be our best recruiters. Uh, it's it's great to meet you, Rich. Um, appreciate, and I, I mean this at the bottom of my heart, what, what you all, everybody, the, the job that you have done, not only in the last 24, 36 hours, um, and and – how much comfort our community has felt because of it goes it goes a long way. Um, we've we've seen the response. We appreciate the response. We feel like you all stepped up in a big big way. So we're grateful for that as a community. Thank you, and I, I have to give the shout out to uh, my partner at the fire department, Chief Jay Wallace. He did a phenomenal job. He's been the incident commander. Um, the mayor and the governor have done a fabulous job, and all the all the city state resources and all our federal partners have done a great job but um, the fire department is the lead agency they've done a great job we're right there with them with our divers working hand in hand Um, and we even have a crime lab there taking photos and like everything has worked really well with the city um, agencies all working together with their federal partners but um, the the fire chief has been the the main one here Uh, we've been a support and i'm happy being a support i've I've been right. the lead for yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. He's done a fabulous job coordinating everything, and the mayor has done a great job, and the governor's been here for anything that we need. So so things are going well, as well as you can in a Give tragedy. The, yep. Yep. Um, now we have to make get, get those families closure and get the, men and the young men that are missing, um, get them back to the family. Commissioner Richard Worley, great to meet you. Thank you for coming in and spending time with us today. Thank you. Great to meet you. Thanks for having me. We'll come